All right, my name is Derek Ruff, here part of Michael Lansing's History 300 class, Public History, my oral interview history project to be kept in the Augsburg College archives. My interview today is Dennis Donovan. So I guess my first question would be, what brought you to Augsburg College? What brought me to Augsburg was um, our center, which at that time was the Center for Democracy and Citizenship five years ago, was located at the Humphrey School of Public Affairs at the uh, University of Minnesota. So our center moved to Augsburg. So being a part of the center, I moved with the center. Okay. And what do you feel your role is here at Augsburg? Would you describe it in any way? Um, well, my role is, is very uh, interesting. So at Augsburg, um, I work with faculty and students and departments to uh, help develop leadership skills with people and also to bring our theory and practice, and our being the Center for Democracy and Citizenship, the theory and practice of public work into the life of Augsburg College. And another part of my work is to make Augsburg College known worldwide as a democracy college, a college that is preparing uh, students to not only be strong um, uh, people, learned people, but also um, citizens. So I'm working currently with the education department, special education department within the education department, and um, nursing department and a variety of different faculty to, to integrate the theory and practice of public work into curriculum. And is that, are those the core values of public achievement, would you say? The core values of public achievement would be um, uh, let's say the core values is public work and citizens at the center and all citizens are co-creators of their environment. Okay. And from what I know, public achievement has gone national. Is that it's, correct? It's, it's local, national, and international. And international. Okay. And does Augsburg have a role in kind of spreading awareness of public achievement? Well, more than that even. The special education department has integrated public achievement into education formation. So teachers who are graduating with a special education degree all have to take a course to learn the habits of organizing, which is also central to public work, as well as coach public achievement for a whole year at a site working with students with special needs. So what that is doing is creating a whole new way of thinking about special education delivery in schools and also a different type of teacher that we're calling citizen teacher. So it's spreading but also it's giving an example of how uh, public work integrated into teacher education can create a different type of teacher. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of it's bringing in aspects outside of the classroom and introducing it to the students yes. in a way. Okay. It's it's think about it think about it as democracy building. Okay. So if the purpose of public education which people have forgotten is to build democracy and to create citizens, then we're, we are renewing that purpose. And have you seen positive results integrating it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, I'm seeing Augsburg students develop something we call civic agency, which is confidence and the ability to navigate the world as it is, and also young people out in schools learning how to be public problem solvers. And teachers, classroom teachers, in, in a couple cases, um, integrating public achievement into their curriculums, which is tremendous because it's part of changing the culture of a school and making more democratic schools. So for the students of the schools where this has been, uh, been practiced, do you see, I'm sure you see a change in, in motivation more yes. than anything. I see not only motivation, but um, a little more self-discipline, um, hopefulness, 
uh, confidence, able to work across differences, and they feel like they're contributing to the world through their work at creating an action to, do, to uh, address an issue that, that they are concerned about, not what the teacher is concerned about. Would you mind giving, any, giving an example? Sure. Um, one of my favorites was uh, Nellie Stone Johnson last year, where um, we had two Augsburg special education teacher candidates coaching and working with an alum who was a teacher, their alum of Augsburg, and a classroom of children with special needs. These, the, their needs were all uh, physical disabilities. Okay. And um, they went through the process of identifying something that they cared about. So all the kids named things, and it ranged from gambling to homelessness um, to pollution. And uh, the pollution one won out. One of the boys' father had died of lung cancer, and, and his, uh, his belief was part of it was caused by pollution. So then work in the process. They had to break it down and f do power analysis and do research and, f you know, meet people and, and learn how to work as a group and how to make decisions and be accountable to each other. And uh, they, uh, they were able to, uh, on one uh, meeting, get the custodian to do an air quality check inside and outside of the school. And, and uh, they went with them and they found that one part of the school property had a lower air quality than the others, and that was because that's where the bus is parked. Yeah. So, the, so then the kids said, this is no good. Maybe we can plant trees because we learned in science that trees will suck up the bad stuff and give out oxygen. This is good. So then they went out about meeting with the principal and the assistant principal, getting their questions answered and getting more questions to answer by the principal. What, where are you going to get the money for the trees? Who's going to work with you? Uh, where you want to plant the trees? Who owns the property? Is it the park or is it the school? And the kids found that all out, and they were able to get uh, 12 trees donated. And they weren't uh, little saplings. They were like $500 trees. And uh, they planted these trees on their school property along with the help of uh, Minneapolis Park and Rec. And... Um, and uh, let's see, and the Tree Trust. Tree Trust was a nonprofit that donated trees. So imagine how you would feel if you were a fifth grader and, and you were able to uh, accomplish that task. You'd, you'd have some hope and confidence and you know, maybe a different outlook on school. I feel like a real difference maker is what I would feel well, like. And that's, and that's what these kids did. Oh. And, and many of them were in wheelchairs. So our society kind of writes off people with uh, special needs. So giving more opportunities to the entire student body, that seems like a major goal. Of yeah, the, it, of it's the changing, process. well, change education. Yeah. Is, is kind of the, the large vision that I've had for many, many, many years. Uh, I was in K-12 for 24 years, 19 as a principal, and um, my school was the first one to do public achievement, so we created the model and I saw what it could do and change the culture of my school and um, you know I want to give it a shot to see if it can change other cultures and and um, have people become powerful agents of change and their own destinies. And you said you, you teach at Minnesota. Or you're University of Minnesota, yeah. University of Minnesota and you have a role here. Yes. Uh, do you implement this at any other colleges or universities? Yes. Yeah. So, so most of my work is outside of Augsburg. Um, and that's because of how my position is funded. My position is funded through contracts and uh, grants to um, expand public achievement and promote public achievement. And um, we're, we're, I'm hoping to be able to work more inside Augsburg, but currently the funds are to work outside. So, um, I work with local institutions like University of Minnesota, Minneapolis Community and Technical College, St. Catharines, um, Metropolitan State, um, Concordia, uh, Century, 
and uh, nationally with um, Lone Star Community College, um, St. Anselm's in New Hampshire, um, Northern Arizona University, University of Baltimore, uh, Maryland, uh, University of Maryland, Baltimore County, uh, a whole variety of schools in, in, in New York, like Colgate, um, Buffalo State, uh, Cornell, um, a variety. So I, I worked, worked with a lot of institutes of higher ed, Castleton in Vermont, you know, um, and also internationally. So public achievements in over 23 countries. And two of our latest countries is bringing into uh, the culture of universities. So in, in Japan, it's a university called Tokai, where they want to change the entire culture of how faculty teach and how students learn. And they want to create citizens, their students to be citizens that know how to make change. And uh, it's right up public achievements alley. So I get to work with those folks. And then in Mexico, there's an institution called Monterey Institute of Technology and Higher Education. So um, last summer, I did a, a course for faculty on how to do this type of work. Do you, do you see any differences with the way public achievement is implemented, say, here than it is anywhere else? Yes. It's always, it's always implemented in a way that respects the culture of the people. So for example, in the Palestinian territories, in West Bank and Gaza, they don't call it public achievement, they call it popular achievement. Because public in Arabic has something, some meaning to a connection to government. And, and the people that we work with did not want this to be thought of as a government program. They want it to be of the people. And uh, that's one example. Um, um, the other one would be um, in in Eastern Europe, where teachers, classroom teachers, are the coaches, and they don't use college students. So, so it's basically part of the school curriculum. That's what and that's what they wanted to do and how to do it. So, basically, my job is to help people learn about it, and to then to support them and work with them, and then they, uh, you know adapt it to their culture and their needs. But the bottom line is the same, that people pick issues that matter to them and they do action to, to uh, address it. And they develop this whole set of thinking about democracy in new ways and learn how to work in, in new ways and do something called everyday politics. And there's different levels of um, depth and success. Now, many years down the road, let's say 25, 30 years from now, what do you see as the future of this program? Do you see... Well, I'll probably be six, six feet under, but uh, the future, um, I would hope that it would be embedded in the life of Augsburg, and Augsburg would be, you know, the, um, um, the center where people would come and learn and it would be embedded in, in other professional programs besides nursing and teacher education. Um, students would have an opportunity to learn how to, how to do this type of work, so there'd be more courses. But I think it would be, uh, my hope is that Augsburg um, becomes the international leader in, in this type of work. So it's taking, um, the idea of the mission of um, service to neighbor and, and having students be involved in service or civic engagement and being really specific at, you know, teaching this empowerment pedagogy. Mm. And um, one might imagine then 25 years from now, the special education, uh, the way people think about special education has changed across the country because of the work that was started here. Um, nurses would receive this type of coursework all over because of the work that was started at Augsburg. So nurses would have a set of skills on their tool belt that would help them be uh, healthcare agents of change because many nurses want to change the healthcare system but they don't know how or they, they are too nice or mm -hmm. things like that. So this, that's how I see it. Okay. And, you, and you did say it could be implemented in other ways too. Could it be implemented in terms of business? Or yes, absolutely. 
How could you give an example in, in that res- regard? Well, um, think of it. Think of think of public work as multi layers. Okay. And public achievement is a way to operationalize public work. But there are aspects of public work where you don't have to do f- public achievement. So you can you can implement the habits of organizing in any profession to create a citizen professional. So a business person would know how to um, not only make money and and profit and all that, but would also know how to improve a community by by working across differences. That's an example. Okay. Um, uh, right now, I'm uh, uh, next week. I'm going to Charlotte, and I'm going to be working with um, government mid-level city managers, teaching them, doing a, a half a day workshop, teaching them how to build relationships and to think about things like self-interest and 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 not to do for, but to do with. So oftentimes. Uh, people in government positions are are responding to needs of people and thinking they got to solve their problems all the time instead of convening people and engaging people with government to collectively use the resources that people have and knowledge to solve problems. So that'd be another example of that. Okay. So it can pretty public achievement could pretty much apply to anyone in any field. Yes. That's absolutely. Do you think Oxford does a good job of spreading awareness of public achievement to those that maybe aren't really familiar with it? Um, as I, uh, let's say we're just scratching the surface. It's just beginning. There's a lot more to come. In oh, other yes. Words. There's, okay. You just stay tuned. There's okay. a lot more to come. Okay. The important thing is, um, as an organizer, I um, I believe that something has to be developed that people can see and touch and smell and taste and so that's what I'm focusing in on. I found people in both the nursing department and special education department that had self-interest that matched mine. So I want to change education. Susan O'Connor wants to change special education. It's a good match, don't you think? Yeah. So Match then, made in heaven. So then you build relationships. Mm-hmm. That's part of this work is building a strong foundation. So Michael Lansing. So Michael Lansing was intrigued by public work, and he's an historian, and and uh, so he he wanted to bring some of these skills into his class. Mm-hmm. So I worked with him in this class he had last fall. It was tremendous, and students came out of there with learning how to do know how to do one to ones and. Um, Civic agency was something that they were developing and talking about, and they had a better sense of not only um, the history of organizing strategies, but also how to how to make some change. So it was really cool. So that's an example of a faculty person. Just want to check this, make sure it's still yeah. recording. Yep. All good. That'd be terrible. Just mm-hmm. go through halfway and then realize it wasn't going. But uh, talk about. Uh, I just want to get your opinion on. So you're not a faculty member, right? I'm considered staff. You're considered staff. Yeah. But you interact with faculty on yes. a regular basis. All the time. What's your opinion of the Oxford faculty? Just my your, opinion. Just through the people I think, you've met. I think. I think. I think um, the people I have met have been very dedicated to students, and very uh, dedicated to teaching. They are here because of students, and they love to teach and engage with students. That's That would be my impression. Unlike the University of Minnesota, where most faculty there, it's not like they don't like students, but they're, re, they're more into research. And, and here, you have in the science department these incredible scientists that I never knew anything about what they're doing, but my goodness, you graduate with a science degree here? You go to the top universities in the country to con- continue just because of what's going on. And that's because of the commitment of teachers to educating um, uh, and working with students. Now, on the flip side, I think um, uh, teachers can learn how to be more public 
with each other. Do you know what I mean by that? Uh, elaborate. Public would mean how to hold each other accountable, how to not be victims of themselves, but how to practice what I've been talking with you about. How do you, how do you uh, work across differences? Not everybody's the same. Um, don't point your fingers at the administration. You know, if, if you have an idea, if there's a problem, then also come up with a solution to the problem. Work with others to make the place better. Own, own the, the mission and vision of the place and engage with people in, in ways that go beyond, um, let's say, nurturing. So an example would be a lot of people would, um, when, when the white officers were shooting uh, unarmed African-American men, mm -hmm. So what's what's the thing people do? Well, you take interest first of all. Yeah, and then you, what? You, you, what's your action? You, you talk about it, I would think. Yeah. Um, but you'd also want to make a difference, also. Yeah. Make sure your right. opinion is heard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times people protest. Yeah. So that's that's like shouting, making noise. So with public achievement, it's it's different. You, you you look at how to work with police. Because if you don't talk to police, you don't know what they go through. And just like in any profession, there are people that make mistakes and, you know, are not good police officers, just like there aren't good teachers. But, you know, the, one of our problems in the country is, is labeling people. You're white, you're black, you're a woman, you're a guy, you're trans transgender. And put labels on people, I think you polarize people. So one of the things I'm getting at is I think... Um, this faculty is no different than the faculty that I've worked with. They've never been exposed to some of these ideas that I that I uh, um, have been exposed to in something called church-based community organizing, which changed my life to, to, to help me learn how to be a public person and how to be a private person and and to know the boundaries of each. You said you were uh, you were. Uh Principal? Yes. Um, where at, may I ask? Well, I started my career out uh, after I graduated from the University of Minnesota okay. as, a fifth, as a sixth grade teacher. So I taught at a Catholic school in St. Paul called Maternity of Mary, which is located in the Como Dale area. And I taught sixth grade for five years, and then the sixth year I became the principal of that school. So I stayed there three more years. Then I went. Uh, probably two miles down the road to a large urban Catholic school called St. Bernard's. So I was a principal of the, the pre-8 for 16 years. And then when I left in 1997, then I came to work for the Center for Democracy and Citizenship, which at that time was located at the Humphrey School of Public Affairs. Okay. Now, how would you say that whole experience of kind of pre-higher education, how did that kind of help you develop kind of your philosophy of what you're doing today? Was well, it, was it, a, it gives, yeah. yeah, it gives me a, um, it gives me an experience and a, um, a knowledge that's different than, um, a traditional path to higher education. Um, I think um, it feeds my passion because of what I've been involved in and what I've done and what I've seen and and what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And I've come to learn that higher education is very important to what I want to do because how it impacts young people and how it develops young people to go out in the world and, and behave, act, create a better world, complain, whatever it might be. Yeah. So um, I think it's been very uh, helpful. There's an old saying I've heard that in order to understand school systems and how education works, you actually have to actually experience it for yourself. Yeah, I think, that, yeah, I believe that in anything. Um, I worked with veterans for three and a half years in a, in a project we, we created with our center called Warrior to Citizen Campaign, which I worked with the National Guard, Army Reserves, politicians, nonprofits, 
you name it. And it's now beyond the Yellow Ribbon campaign. So not being a veteran, I didn't know much about the culture of military, but I learned by always hanging out with veterans and soaking it all in. And uh, did you see American Sniper? Uh, I haven't seen it yet. I've got to see it, though. I hear good things about it. When so. I saw the Sniper, American Sniper, I could identify because of what I learned and the men and women that I engaged with that movie's about his reintegration back in the civilian life and the difficulty of reintegrating and why he uh, deployed four times to Iraq and, you know, the suffering of the family when he was gone. So all of that stuff I would not have felt or known to the degree that I did if I hadn't been involved in that particular part. So I think um, being immersed in different cultures makes one a better, um, creates a, a knowledge and, and, and expertise that is um, helpful in the work that I do. So for an education major, when they're introduced to culture, let's say they're kind of indifferent about it. Let's say, oh, I'm fine with my culture. I'm comfortable with it. I don't want to get out somewhere different. What would you say to that person? Don't be a teacher. I think um, teachers are, are so important for the future because they have, have these people with them more so than parents are in a school. And uh, not to want to learn themselves was a mistake. I learn something every day. And uh, when I say culture, I don't necessarily mean um, a person's race. I just mean um, culture would be the set of rules of an organization or people. So, so uh, Augsburg has a culture. There's rules, there's ways of operation. You know, the faculty behaves certain, you know, people behave certain ways. That's all part of the culture. So is that what you're referring to? Or yeah. You're, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would say, you know, you're not going to make that big a difference if you don't want to understand culture, and um, especially culture with schools, how do schools work, the politics, school district, you know, all that stuff plays into um, teaching. And I hope that teachers want to be change agents, so not only work with improving the lives of young people, but also the communities that they're in. Now for, let's say areas, more rural areas that aren't known for being very diverse, has public achievement been implemented in those areas? Mm -hmm. Do you f ever struggle with the, maybe the idea that there isn't uh, a lot of diversity within those, those schools? I don't know, um, it is what it is. And well, there's always diversity, you know, age, gender, um, abilities, all that kind of stuff. Is there a lot of, maybe I should have rephrased the question, do you, is there a good amount of cultural diversity in those schools, would you say? Mm, no, they're pretty much white in rural places, but they have to interact sometimes now more and more with uh, Mexicans and um, Somalis, for example. Mm. So how do, how do what happens if you never saw a Muslim? What do you, how do you react to that? Uh, um, so I think part of education is, especially in America, is learning about other people. I never saw a person of color until I was in my 20s from the standpoint of where I grew up and, and the era I grew up. What, what kind of age group do you think public achievement should be implemented? Should it be done right away, starting off with kindergarten, or should they wait a little I th bit? Yeah, I think, I think there's different ways of um, thinking about it. It really depends on, on the school and, and place. You can bring aspects of public achievement into kindergarten, but you know, you, you want to have the right teacher and you want to have the right school support. Um, 
basically you want to start by having kids realize that um, there's differences in the classroom and maybe make the rules together of how we're going to operate. You know, maybe have some kids pick what we're going to learn. So they start having a voice early on. They don't necessarily pick an issue and work on it. But I think there's aspects of public achievement that can be brought into any age group. Let's just check right here. Okay. Just got a few more questions I'd like to bring up. So for an undecided high school student who's just about to graduate and they're considering Augsburg as a as a school to go to and they're thinking about being an education major w pretty much everything you said I'm assuming you would sell them on kind of those core principles well I would I would like to first have coffee with them to get to know them <laughs> I should have brought I, some coffee <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, try to sell them I, I, uh, I like to get to know people um, before I give any advice but um, if somebody was interested in education I want to know why and then if they wanted to um, um, be an educator to help people I would I would definitely want to explore what that means and um, I think there needs to be more than help I think there needs to be a, an empowerment piece where um, where, where students feel a sense of ownership and a sense of hopefulness that oftentimes is not there in education. Um, again, depending on what school you're in, if, you know, every Thursday I go over to Fairview Augsburg Academy and uh, we have public achievement there and um, great kids, but you know, dealing with all kinds of stuff that doesn't always uh, allow them to show up mm. when you have a hundred, 40 kids and 50% are homeless, that's, that's a tough one to, you know, when you think about learning math and history and stuff. Um, but So in that setting, how do, how do you get them, how do you get the, the students to see the value of education and, and help them imagine a different life, a life that, you know, focus around their gifts and talents, things like that. So I think a teacher needs a, a, te a person that wants to do that, I think Augsburg is heading in the, um, in a direction of, of, of developing these teachers that are uh, not just good in the classroom, but also uh, good at, out in the community. Based on what you just said, why do you think most people go into education as a career path? I want to help people, help kids, they like kids. Sometimes they don't know anything else. Their parents were teachers. There's all kinds of, of reasons. I went, into, I went into education because I was always around kids. I'm the oldest of seven. Uh, I coached when I, uh, sports when I was in, um, early in college. Um, I like performing and uh, I liked uh, my my uh, history teacher when I was a sophomore in high school because he made learning fun, exciting. We laughed, we learned, and uh, I could relate to that type of uh, teacher-student um, interaction. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of why I went into it. It wasn't until I started um, started. Uh, it wasn't until I experienced. The classroom and parents and family and and the world um, that I began to imagine um, a different way of thinking about education and that really uh, has been my passion really inspiring passion to be honest no oh, thank you it's, uh, it seems like you've done a lot for educators and teachers and yeah. are continuing to do so well I um, I'm doing the best I can with, yeah. with with what we have but the important thing is I love what I do and so getting back to that conversation with that person looking to be a teacher you know um, if 
if they want to, if they want to, uh, I've had I've had people tell me they want to have a better, they want to provide a better education for young people than they got. So that per, kind of that that person you want to be a teacher. Or sometimes I have, I just I have this guy that is currently at Augsburg, and I knew him years ago, and and he got a degree in political science, and he was at a community college, and that's where I met him, and he was doing public achievement in the college it was part of a health course he was in. And uh, he said, I think I want to be a special ed teacher. And I said, why? Because I was one of those kids, and I want to make a difference. I said, you have to go to Augsburg. Now, why would I say that? Because I know what we're doing in the special education department. I don't, I don't know everything going on in the general ed, but I know what's going on in the special ed. So when he said that, I said, you got to come, and, he, and he's enrolled. And he's been coaching public achievement for two years as a volunteer because it made it such an impact on him when he was in his 30s. Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know. Uh, you kn I explained earlier, I, I'm an education yeah. major, so uh, just to hear ways to get students engaged and uh, school wasn't easiest for me as a kid too and to kind of hear the results that's really cool yeah. stuff so so what did you did you uh you didn't like school i wouldn't say i didn't like school but it was harder for me than than other Why is students that? i just uh i was I, i'd say i wasn't totally out of it but i was just a little slow okay just slow gripping on to okay what was so, so teachers need to be more patient with you help you along Technically, yeah. Yeah. So now, what do you want to do as a teacher, or why do you want to be a teacher? I just want to make sure that every student has an equal opportunity okay. to learn what's being presented. Okay. So you got to get involved with public achievement. <laughs> now, here's something seriously too. Mm -hmm. Mark down March 31st. Write it in your calendar, four to five thirty. My colleague Harry Boyd, who sits here I don't, I'm looking for his book we're having a we're having an event here featuring public achievement at Augsburg and special ed and I want students there I want students who are going to be teachers it's it's democracy education so you need to come okay March 31st right here up at East Commons 4 to 5 30 okay and I'm sure there'll be people mentioning it as soon as we get the flyer made Yes, one final question. Uh, when you uh, when you leave here, let's say when you're done working mm -hmm. here at Oxford, uh, what do you want your legacy to be? What What would you say if you have one? That is. Well. That I that I was able to, uh, you know, do do what I love to do. Um, was given the opportunity to to be creative and uh, the space the space and support to um, work in a framework that I I believe in, and that um, there were people that. I was able to develop, to carry on, and uh, made made some dent into education that provided um, opportunities for more students to to be hopeful and successful. Um, when I was uh, let's see, about 1989-90, uh, when I was involved in um, how can I tell you? Uh, let's say church-based organizing, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. um, and I had a black Baptist pastor as a mentor, and, and uh, we would talk and work together. And uh, He taught me a lot about African-American people, and, and uh, I watched him preach. I watched him engage with people, um, learned a lot. 
And uh, on one meeting we were having, he said, you know, what you're trying to do is necessary and important. This was right in the beginning of public achievement. He said, but you'll never see the results in your lifetime. So that was very um, interesting. So I'm not looking for anything. Um, it's it's a it's a ongoing piece of work. So if if I've had a opportunity to involve uh, help teachers think about their jobs in different ways, so be it. Would you say you've made progress on that though so far? Yes, I, I think it's been in different um, in different levels and different in different ways. But I think one of the uh, most exciting for me is is the opportunity to work in teacher development here at Augsburg. And Augsburg is is a good size to be able to. Um, bring in the ideas of our center to a program that's already strong um, and make it better. Very good. I guess that's about it. But we're, uh, we're good to go? We are. I'd uh, just like to extend my best wishes to you. And, well, uh, thank you. I plan on uh, circling that date on the calendar. Well, I hope you show up and bring the students from Michael Anthony's class. I'll have to. I'll... Most of them uh, aren't education majors, but I'll, I will be sure. It's all right. Anybody, yeah. anybody can benefit from this. True. Now, do you play football? Yes. What position? Uh, fullback. Yes. So are you blocking then, or do you run? Most, most of the time blocking, yes. What high school did you go to? Uh, Totino Grace. Really? Yeah. Yep. So you guys had a good, good team. Weren't you in a championship a few times, or did you win it? Uh, twice when I was there. You won the state championship twice, and you were on the team. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel? Uh, you feel pretty good afterward. Yeah, definitely, and uh, still playing right now at Augsburg and enjoying it. So, yeah. um, going cool. for, going for that Mayak championship next year. Okay, well, I heard you guys are pretty good, huh? Uh, little down last year, but uh, I think our program's at a good uh, spot right now. So, who who was the who was the coach at Totina when you were there? Jeff Ferguson. Okay, how about the, who's the principal? Uh, we don't have a... Or a director? Or, yeah, we have, yeah, we have a principal. Julie Michaels. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Julie Michaels. Yeah. I, I don't... You don't see the principal too often. You mainly see the dean of students. Dean of students, yeah. And that's uh, Jeff Ferguson also. Okay, so the football coach is the dean of students. Yeah. Good, so he knows good, how to handle kids. Good, good guy to be in charge of that. So. so how do you do when you play Creighton? Uh, you know... Uh, we didn't play Cretan when I was there, actually. Now, were you there when J.D. Pride was there? Yes, yes. J.D. Pride was a student of mine. Really? At the university when he was a freshman. Oh, very cool. Nice guy. We had a good time. Yeah, he uh, he ended up transferring, though. Yeah, I don't know where he went. He came back to the U. I saw him. I saw him. I don't think he's playing football, but he, but he, he left, and then he came back. I saw him. Where the heck did I see him? I saw him over to you. No, I saw him at a coffee shop. Oh, I go. I, I, I work with a lot of student athletes, mm. and a lot of them are in my class. It's just the way that it's, it's worked over the years. So, if you want uh, African American in your class, and you, you know, you, you got to have football players. Mm. And these guys are good guys, and they just sometimes are in big lecture halls, and I sit in the back. And but in my classes, they're engaged, and I love having them in there. So. So uh, JD was one, and so I I do visits with students um, at the Purple Onion. I don't know if you've been over there in Dinky Town. Heard of it? Yeah. Yeah, that's where I saw him. I saw him last year, I think. Mm. Yeah, JD Pride. Yeah, he was in my class, mm. and that class I had a big class that one year. I had eleven football players. <laughs> so yeah. you're used to kind of mingling with them, definitely. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, yeah I I told them I have seven in my class this semester and spring practices started uh, today I think yeah yeah and so I said well boys I'll be over <laughs> so I like to go over there and and it's really it's really quite interesting I bet you I, I bet you I've had a third of the team on in my class mm. and they and it, and like everything I'm saying here uh, I try to I try to still do in my class, mm. and uh, I, I really, in, 
enjoy teaching, so it's it's cool. And the and the guys, you know, they um, they're good guys. And like I said, I want to make the experience as real as possible. So we have some good conversations, and 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 I have all kinds of different students in the classroom, some Republicans, liberals. I have a Marxist in there this year, and mm. and um, you know different cultures. I have, um, some some Eastern uh, East African people and and African American, you know, football players from all over the country and urban areas and then rural people and just it's just a lot of fun when we start talking about stuff. It was fun talking to you also. Well, thank you. So you're a junior or a sophomore? Junior. Okay, you're a junior. So you went to Tatina. Where'd you go to grade school? Uh, Chippewa Middle School. I don't know. If you've I know where that is. You did have Moundsview, you, right? Yep. That school district. Yep. And then uh, decided public school wasn't for me, so mm -hmm. uh, thought I'd try private high school. What are, What does your What do your parents do? Uh, my dad uh, owns his own business, abstracting company, and then uh, my mom works as a banker. Mom's a banker. Lake Elmo Bank. All right. Yep. So mom has. So do you live out there in uh, in uh, Fridley, or do you? No, nah, Shoreview. Shoreview. Okay. So how did you like Totino? Great school. <clears throat> Loved it there. Part of the reason I came into ed education because, I mean, uh, they knew I struggled in school. Mm -hmm. and I got good teachers that really helped me out and got me going. So, so how, are they, how are they working with you here? Uh, love the... So love are you here. taking advantage of, of the help in, in, like, class and things like that? I would hope so. Yeah, definitely. So uh, you're taking advantage of that and... Cause it's one of the best in the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, they're not going to be around all the time, so mm -hmm. you know, get their input and advice while you can. All right. So now, what are you? What uh, are you going to the secondary, or what's your what? What do you want to teach? Secondary uh, social studies. Yeah, so. that's kind of the goal for me. So. Well, you have to learn some more of what we talked about. Yeah. Because you can make a difference in your classroom because. Yeah. A lot of the curriculum will be just helping the kids learn about the government, yeah. or you could uh, help them learn about how to be the government yeah. <laughs> and hold the government accountable, and not just wait for somebody to fix it. But yeah. but I, I think that'd be great. Correct. So who are you who so what are some instructors here in in the education department that that uh, that you, you know teach teach the classes you're involved in? Uh, Rachel Lloyd. I don't know if you know her. Mm -hmm. uh, I asked her if she knew you, and she said no either. So, uh, uh, Christopher Smith. I've heard of him. But I, I I know who he is, yeah. but I, I don't have a relation with him. Um, Joe Erickson. I know Joe. I've had Joe for three, three semesters. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, I know um, all the special ed, and then I know Audrey Linsmeyer and. I've had Audrey and uh, yeah. Greg. You know Greg uh, Kruger. Uh no. I think you should visit him sometime. He teaches kindergarten, but before he retires, go visit with him. Yep. And he's retiring this year. He taught kindergarten mm -hmm. for like 30 years. Wow. Okay? Okay. In, in Minneapolis at Marcy. And I just got to know him last year, and, and he's a man. He's, a, he's somebody that that you need to pick his brain about why did he go into, t I would just ask him, why did you go into teaching? Why are you involved in preparing teachers? And, you know, what's some advice for me? I'm going to teach social studies. What's some advice for me? Mm -hmm. And and tell him that, you know, school is hard and you got to, you know, take your time. And people help you out. Just say, what's your advice for me as a teacher? All right. Greg Kruger. Okay. And and uh, and when you do the things like that, that's kind of what I'm. What I teach is, is how to help students meet people, and learn from them, and build relationships, so that down the road you can call on these relationships, when you're in the classroom or whatever. 